Hi, everybody, and welcome to another installment of A Girl's Guide to Autism. My name is Miranda, and today I'm going to be telling you all about masking. As always, I will be drawing from things I've learned in my professional slash school life, as well as from my own experiences as an autistic person. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Sir Anthony Hopkins is a well-known actor, composer, director, and film producer. Most people probably know him as uh, Dr. Hannibal Lecter from The Silence of the Lambs. But he is so much more than that iconic role. Over the course of his career, Hopkins has been the recipient of multiple awards, including an Oscar, three BAFTAs, two Emmys, and the Cecil B. DeMille Award. He was also knighted by Queen Elizabeth II for services to the arts. Long story short, the guy can act really, really well. Why am I telling you this, you may ask? Because Hopkins was diagnosed with autism at the age of 77. For reference, most people with ASD are diagnosed when they are young children. But there are people, particularly women, who aren't diagnosed until they're well into adulthood. One reason for this has to do with masking. Masking, or camouflaging as it's sometimes called, is when someone with ASD artificially performs social behavior that is deemed to be more normal or, alternatively, hides behavior that might be viewed as socially unacceptable. In plain English, it's when an autistic person is able to act like a neurotypical person. Some autistic people, like Hopkins, do this really, really well. So well, in fact, that they often go undiagnosed. So what does masking look like? Sometimes it looks like imitation, imitating gestures, mimicking others' social behavior, making eye contact during conversation because, hey, that's what everyone else is doing. Sometimes it's coming up with a game plan before a social interaction, pre-preparing phrases, topics of conversation, or jokes. A lot of masking involves studying neurotypical people and trying to figure out what is going on in their heads. Interestingly, this is the same technique Hopkins uses to prepare for acting roles. He stated that he likes to deconstruct, to pull a character apart, to work out what makes them tick. Now, I'm no Anthony Hopkins, but I was pretty good at masking when I was younger. Here's an example. When I was in the fourth grade, my all-time favorite book was Les Miserables. How I wasn't diagnosed earlier, I will never know. Anyways, like all kids, I loved talking to other people about my interests. However, I figured out pretty quickly that most fourth graders aren't reading Les Miserables for fun, and my classmates had no idea what I was talking about. I realized that if I wanted to have an actual conversation with my peers, I would need to figure out what they were interested in and talk about that instead. Then, I reasoned, I would fit in and everyone would like me. This was fine in theory, but in practice, not so much. Let's be clear. When I say I was good at masking, I don't mean that I was ever particularly popular. As you may have figured out, I was a weird and somewhat off-putting little kid. However, I was able to mask just enough that people assumed I was neurotypical, just a little quirky or eccentric. As I've mentioned before, men and boys are diagnosed with ASD earlier and at a much higher rate than girls and women. This is partly due to the fact that autistic girls often present differently from autistic boys. Many autistic girls show more social interest, heightened emotion or effective empathy, increased imagination, different contents of narrow interests, and more friendships than their male counterparts. Autistic girls are also generally better at hiding any social difficulties they may have. In other words, masking. As a result, these girls fly under the radar and often go undiagnosed. On the one hand, masking might seem like a good thing. We live in a neurotypical world, after all, and learning to pass as neurotypical can help autistic people socially and professionally. However, there is a cost. Many people with ASD experience autistic burnout, which is defined as the long-term exhaustion of trying to imitate the behaviors of neurotypical people. Masking requires a lot of mental and emotional energy, and expending that much energy all the time is incredibly draining. As a result, many autistic people who mask experience increased stress responses, meltdown due to social overload, anxiety, and depression. In an ideal world, autistic people would not feel the need to mask in order to be accepted. We would be accepted as we are. 
We aren't living in that world yet, but hopefully as more people learn about ASD, the pressure to mask will lessen. And that's it for this video. Before I go, I wanna let all my fellow autistic friends know that you are amazing, you are unique, and you deserve to be treated with respect. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.